There are two infamous prisons in the western U.S. One is the Yuma Territorial Prison, and the other one is Alcatraz. The Territorial Prison is really an icon of the Southwest. It opened in 1876. It was open for 33 years. It housed over 3,000 prisoners. 29 of those were women. If you, you know, robbed a bank, you got caught. The situation was that each small western town had a tiny little jailhouse, usually the sheriff's office. But some of these uh, bank robbers were in gangs. And finally, as Arizona is becoming more sophisticated, they realized they needed a territorial prison. The original prison was going to be in Phoenix. The legislators all decided to take a lunch break. But Jose Maria Redondo and his sidekick, uh, J.B. Kelly, they did not go to lunch that day. They erased the word Phoenix and they wrote the word Yuma in. When people came back, they voted and Yuma got the territorial prison. The confluence of the Hill and the Colorado met right here behind the prison. So literally, this, the prison, this uh, granite outcropping is surrounded by water. And uh, beyond the river, you had acres and acres of sand dunes. So th this was a really tough place. Once you got here, it was a very hard to escape. Here we are in the main cell block. So let's just talk about a prisoner, what would happen to him. He would usually arrive in Yuma by train. All of his worldly goods would be confiscated and destroyed. That means his suit of clothes, his hat, his pipe, whatever. And he was then given this, this standard package of things. What would happen to him first is he would be bathed. He would be, uh, his rap sheet would be filled out. He would be given uniform, one uh, shirt, two pair of pants. He'd be given underwear, blankets, uh, pillowcases, toothbrush, comb and brush, and interestingly enough, a hand-carved ivory toothpick that he would keep the whole time. It must have been part of the uh, hygiene of the day. So then he'd be assigned a bunk out and he would probably meet his six roommates, his five roommates, sometimes six. So here we are in a, a cell. You can see they're small. There are three metal bunks on each side. Originally, the prisoner, the, the bunks were the prison that they would sleep on would be a straw mattress on wooden bunks, but they had a large infestation of bed bugs. The prisoners went crazy, they couldn't sleep, so metal bunks were built right away, and they used cotton mattresses after that. Plus, you never knew who your roommates were going to be. Uh, you could have some incredible uh, murderer who was a lifer. You could have someone who was here only for a small crime. The people of Yuma called the Yuma Territorial Prison the country club on the Colorado River. They thought of this as the place that had the first electricity, first light bulb was here. There were three flush toilets, the only ones in Yuma two showers and three bathtubs. So it appeared that this was a country club full of luxury and three really good meals a day. The other side of it is the hell hole. Of course, in the summer here, it was really, really hot, up to 118 degrees. There were diseases, 133 prisoners died here most of them from a consumption, we call it tuberculosis today. They're just getting ready to enter the dark cell. And this was the solitary confinement cell. Any major infraction, talking back to a guard, not giving your uh, respect to you know, the authorities, 
it was really, if they couldn't deal with you, the dark cell could deal with you. So here, here we are in the dark cell. This is living rock carved into granite. The prisoners carved this out themselves. There is a large air shaft. It would have been completely dark. And in here was a four foot high cage. So the male prisoners would be stripped down to just their underwear and locked in the small cage. And it was, of, of all the treatment, this was the place you didn't want to come because you did not have a latrine. You got bread and water once a day. Occasionally, there'd be more than one person in here. And one great big prison uh, breakout, there were 12 people in here and uh, maybe six in the cage. And then there are rings in the floor they would chain the, pris the, the prisoners that wouldn't fit in the cage around here. So it was really a sort of a very scary uh, part of, of life because there were the folklore, we have no proof of this, that said a mean guard would, in the pitch black, you'd feel something coming down the air shaft and it could have been a scorpion or a snake. But that's how this dark cell got the name, as the scorpion den or the snake den. This is the place where some of the greatest uh, characters in the Old West spent some time here. For every crime you can imagine, including polygamy, including grand larceny, being a revolutionary in the United States, and uh, lots of gunslingers. If someone would say, who's the most infamous of all the prisoners? Well, I would just say, hands down, it's Pearl Hart. Pearl Hart and her boyfriend, Joe Boot, robbed the last stagecoach in Arizona. They were arrested. She and Joe came here together. But Pearl became the infamous Pearl Hart why? Because Cosmopolitan Magazine in New York did a serialized story for three months. People were fascinated by the crime. She was known as the Girl Bandit. And she became so well known, there were reporters from all over the country showing up at the prison to interview Pearl. Well, it was, a very, it was a hardship on the warden to have, you know, a celebrity prisoner. And she, in fact, was given an early parole. She went on the vaudeville stage to reenact the, the holdup, and she was booed off the stage because her acting was comparable to, the, to her career as a stagecoach robber. We also had in here Buckskin Frank Leslie. Wyatt Earp said that he was probably faster than Doc Holliday on the draw. These people all came from the Tombstone era, which really embodied the Wild West. The prison closed in 1909 because it was simply overcrowded. They were basically out of cells. The prison closed and very shortly thereafter, Yuma High School moved in. The small little high school building had burned. Just in the nick of time, we have an, a beautiful facility. And the fact is, they, the, ch the children were not in the cells. They were in the offices and in the hospital going to class. And their mascot is a fellow in a striped suit with a ball and chain. The school opened in 1909, so it's a, we've got 104 years on our hands here of alumni that are proud of being a criminal. It's surprising, but people are on vacation, they're tourists, they are fascinated by historic prisons. There's something in our, our culture, in the, our consciousness of what would it have been like to be in a prison like this. If you ever watched a John Wayne movie, if you ever watched Westerns on television, if you ever saw the movie The 310 to Yuma, 
you want to see the real piece of work and that is the authentic prison that we're, we're here. We're, you come and visit and you will learn a lot about Western history. And it gives you a step back in time of early American history.